Um, spotted lantern flag. <coughs> this one may end up being more of a, a pest for our horticultural crops than for our, our, our um, forest and ornamental trees, but there is some concerns there as well. So again, it's not something that we've found in Michigan, but we have a lot of concern about it. And uh, it's a fairly uh, distinctive looking insect. Not a lot of other insects out there that look real similar to it, although we do get reports of suspect spotted lanternflies that might be a, a bee with a red spot on it or something. So there is some confusion. This is the adult with the wings spread at rest. Um, you can see that late summer into the fall. This would be the, the early nymph, um, a small black and white insect that you'd see in the spring when the eggs hatch. This would be the, the fourth instar, I believe, when you start to get some red, but before they turn into the adult with the, with the, the wings. So in late summer, in some of the areas where it's been present the longest, in Pennsylvania, uh, they get large numbers of spotted lantern fly that will congregate on trees. We see this oak here that's just completely covered. It's uh, established in about 13 counties as of last year in eastern Pennsylvania. It was first detected in 2014, so it's been spreading fairly quickly. It's also present in some areas of nearby states, Delaware, New York, and Virginia. The, the signs and symptoms, um, you will see some weeping wounds on trees. And of course, when you have that occurring, that's a potential location for fungi or bacteria to get in and cause other problems as well. These spotted lantern flies will create a sticky exudate that coats the surfaces below, like we see on uh, some grape leaves there. You get sooty mold that grows on that. You also get flies and, and bees and things that are attracted to that. One of the really big concerns, though, are, are these egg masses. So the egg masses look like kind of a uh, grayish mud dabbed on the side of a tree or a different object, any sorts of equipment or other things that are adjacent to these trees can be um, sites where these egg masses are laid. And uh, that can be easily carried to new areas. So this has a high potential to move longer distances with those egg masses. So this is what the egg mass looks like when it's fresh. Eventually that kind of weathers and cracks and can weather away. And, might be a little hard to see, but you get these rows of seed-like objects on the, the side of the, the tree or you know, the, the camper that was parked nearby or whatever else, rocks. Here you can see the egg masses on a burn barrel. Um, one generation per year. It's in the, the fall, October to December in, in Pennsylvania when you get the, the egg masses. And that just shows the, the stages as the insect develops. So, hosts. Um, spotted lanternfly really likes Tree of Heaven. And that, that tends to be a, a location where they would congregate late in the year. They also like willows and other species. Since this insect's only been a problem in the U.S., or it was first detected in the U.S. in 2014, there hasn't been a lot of time for research on it here. We know in Korea, where it's also an invasive pest from other areas of Asia, it's been known to attack 65 different species, and we have quite a number of those in the U.S. as well. So. Uh, quite a variety of fruit crops where it can be a big concern as well as some of our, our landscape trees and timber species as well. So Tree of Heaven, there's some thought that we may want to start um, surveying more extensively for Tree of Heaven so we know uh, where in Michigan we might expect this pest if, it, if and when it gets to Michigan. 
Um, we would expect it to be in areas with the tree of heaven. So, um, have contact information here for these invasive forest pests that we don't have established in Michigan and that we're quite concerned about. And uh, James might talk about reporting somewhat as well, but um, MDARD would be the, um, the primary agency involved with the initial detections, a number of ways that you can actually report these, but even contacting us is a way to report suspects. So, just in case folks don't know, for this species and well, I think any of the higher watch list species, if you put it into missing, it, uh, a report automatically goes to the relevant folks in that guard, right? Correct. Yeah. Good. So, any other questions about spotted lantern fly or reporting invasive forest pests? Can you clarify what you're saying about this uh, tree of heaven? Uh, yeah, right. So, um, tree of heaven. It, so far in the research that's been done, it seems that it's one, it may be the only species or one of the only species that the spotted lanternfly can complete its life cycle on. So in Pennsylvania, they find that where they've got tree of heaven, that's where you're going to have um, potential for a lot of spotted lanternfly. So if we know uh, where, spot, where tree of heaven is, then we can um, have a better feel for where we would expect spotted lantern fly and when it gets to Michigan. So that's that's kind of uh, why we're so interested in Tree of Heaven. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this might be, you know, one invasive killing another invasive, right? So Yeah, yeah, so, you know, controlling the Tree of Heaven might be so we'll learn more in the next few years as things progress in Pennsylvania too and you know whether or not there's other species that it can also uh, you know, complete its life cycle on. It will attack a lot of other species but it, it can't complete its life cycle on. <laughs> you mentioned yes. in Korea it's an invasive so you know, maybe I missed something but where is it from? Um, I believe it must be from China. Yeah, the tree of heaven. So tree of heaven is a rare and sacred tree in China, um, and then it's invasive kind of everywhere else. Uh, so if that's a tree that they need for their life cycle. Yeah. So those egg masses, when they get laid on, you know, I think some shipments of stone have been implicated in movement of this, but that's how it seems to be getting moved to, to new areas. <coughs> But it's not a problem in China, as far as you know. I, I don't think it's a major problem. I don't know if it, it's been blamed for any damage there or not. But um, yeah, there's you know, and it, as we get further along, we'll learn more about whether or not there's some biological control potential there, or other things that could be done to reduce their populations. 